no, scaling up, I'm like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, she's like, well, just tell your story, you know. Uh, Christine and Katie might stop by and um, get a hold of you and see if you want to speak at our conference. I'm like, okay, cool, no problem. And then when Katie and Christine did, I was like, oh, you really want me to do this? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so um, I always told myself if I could help somebody by sharing my story, I would do that. Um, and then get used to being uncomfortable. Um, so a little bit about my uh, background about me before we get started um, and how Memories of Home was developed. Um, I grew up on a farm north of West Ope. Uh, north Dakota is kind of where everything, my roots started. I was a farm kid. Um, I loved animals and being outdoors. Um, I always helped my dad on the farm from farming in the field, driving the tractors, cultivating from all of the, to all of the cattle work, and also helping my grandfather hay um, in the hot summer months. I also helped my mother in her garden, and I always cherished uh, when she um, gave me a spot in the garden to uh, grow my own goods and also take care of it, right, <laughs> as a kid. Um, I also um, remember picking raspberries and choke cherries with my uh, grandmother and mother. Um, I also think about the baking and creating we did as a family, and those memories were so important to me, and I wanted to carry them in my heart for the rest of my life. Um, a little bit of a fast forward, um, I attended college and got a four-year degree in wildlife biology and was currently working in animal care in Minot. In the fall of 2011, um, my husband and I purchased a home in the country. Truly, it was a dream come true. I had my horse out uh, my back door. I had enough uh, space to plant a huge garden. So by the fall of um, you know, the next year in 2012, um, I had grown more food than I could ever eat or my husband and I could ever eat ourselves. I was giving it away to family, friends, anything from the produce um, that I was growing to all the canned goods, baked goods, and so forth. On a canning mission in 2013, a, a business idea came to me. Um, keeping my memories alive through the goods I was making seemed like the perfect idea to me. On July 14th, 2015, I began my side business adventure at the Minot Farmer's Market. Um, my records show um, I sold that day a variety of vegetables, dog biscuits, jams, breads, and cookies. Um, I made $161 that day. I was so impressed, I wanted to do it again and again and again, so I can continue doing that through that season. I quickly learned um, using a hand mixer um, to make 30 or more loaves of bread for a market would really make your hands sore. Um, so I began to save my money to purchase um, a, a kitchen aid stand mixer. Towards the end of that market, I was able to save enough money um, and uh, purchase that stand mixer so then I could use it next season as well. But if anybody knows me, um, they know I like to work smarter, not harder, um, but sometimes you have to work harder before you get smarter. Fast forward a little bit, um, I continued with the farmer's market for a few seasons, but then um, the more I did that, I decided to explore more ideas to grow this side gig. Um, I talked with my cousin at uh, Tease Tangles um, about what I needed to get licensed and registered and such. She, she held my hand a little bit, answered a ton of questions, um, and I was able to get the things that I needed. Uh, so in March of 2016, Memories of Home by Becky was established. And basically the rest is history from here. I knew I wanted to, a logo to tell my story and I knew I wasn't that person to create it. I'm a baker, I care for animals, I don't do website design or um, any website or any logo design um, just because we just don't get along. Um, I contacted a graphic uh, design artist to help me out um, and to bring my idea to reality. Um, they helped me get my labeling down to look professional as well. Um, then I immediately uh, joined Pride of, 
Dakota because I wanted to be recognized as a North Dakota um, gal making everything from locally purchased or homegrown goods. So now that I have established my business, um, how do I find work? Um, what type of work can I even do if I'm still working full time? Um, I knew I, it would have to be in the evenings or on weekends and very flexible on what I do. Um, did I want to you know, explore retail or just sell everything directly myself? Um, I did um, obtain a food license and then I had a commercial kitchen uh, to work out of, so I had those things going for me. Um, I had so many unanswered questions. All I knew is that I just needed to start and refuse to fail. And obviously I had a lot, 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 lot to learn. Um, I knew this side gig would grow as slow or as fast as I wanted it to. It was a side gig after all, right? <laughs> well, that's what I thought at the time. So in April of 2016, I applied to be a vendor at the Big One Show in Minot. I had some crafts, I had some baked goods, I had some canned goods. My tables were full. I was so proud of the work um, I had put in. After that show, um, I was like, okay, well, that was you know, a great show. What should I do now? Um, what goals should I set? Um, so I decided I needed to purchase a second uh, KitchenAid uh, mixer just because I had a commercial kitchen. I it was working out of a home um, oven. You know, you can only get six loaves in there where a commercial oven, I could do 30. So I'm like, well, I need another hand mixer, you know, or a stand mixer, so I'm not doing everything by hand. You know, more, being more efficient, work smarter, not harder. All right. Um, sorry, I lost my place. All right. Um, eventually, um, working um, through Farmer's Market um, and then a few POD shows, I eventually uh, realized um, I was working every single waking hour and something had to give. So I decided to let Farmer's Market go and just um, start canning all the goods from my gar garden and then just selling them that way at different shows. Um, in 2017 and 2018, um, let's see. I was working out of a, um, a friend's uh, kitchen, um, so I was hauling everything in and out of their place. So everything that I needed that day, I hauled in. After it was done and baked, I hauled it out. That's a lot of work. And I'm like, oh, I need to get smarter about this. So eventually, I convinced my husband that it would be a great idea to put a commercial kitchen in our basement in a bedroom. So finally, after a lot of convincing, he's like, all right, all right. He let me do it just so I could be more efficient. Um, so I'm working out of, and still currently, a 10 by 12 kitchen, commercial kitchen space. But then after everything's prepared in there, it can move out of there. Um, so forward a little bit, um, in 2019, um, I was starting to grow a little bit. Um, Definitely feeling the pressure from, you know, retail, you know, getting into a couple real retail locations. I started out at the Market on 4th, which is a small shop in Minot, which grew into um, the Foundry. Um, so keeping them stocked, different retail uh, locations such as Home Sweet Home. I definitely had a lot of no's, which, you know, kind of crushed my heart. I'm like, what? You don't want my stuff, you know? Come on. Um, but um, eventually, one yes is all it took. Um, I was on my way to um, the Fargo Pride of Dakota. I booked myself a double show why I did this. I think um, we all seem to take on more than we can handle. But then I also um, booked the Bismarck big one. So I had two shows in one weekend, and I also had to staff that one show. So here I am with my husband's pickup, because I just have a regular size pickup. I had his topper so I could haul more things. I dropped everything off in Bismarck, and then I was on my way to um, the Fargo Pride of Dakota. I was on three hours of sleep. 
I literally was um, eating a salad <laughs> from Bismarck to Fargo, piece by piece, just to stay awake. And on my way there, I was just like, oh my gosh, I am so burnt out um, from working every single waking hour. I was like, something's got to give, something's got to change. What am I going to do? So the next week, I wrote my resignation letter. <laughs> I, I quit my day job. <laughs> Sorry, give me a minute. <laughs> And then the rest is history. I got everything going in my personal kitchen. Um, I eventually learned. Um, I had some friends coming and helping me. I'm like, oh my gosh, an extra set of hands? Look how much more I can do. That just opened my eyes to another avenue of stuff. Because I always said, you know, I don't want a storefront. I just want. You know, just me to do my thing, grow as fast as I want to, slow as I want to. Um, another thing that I learned in 2020, because I quit my job in 2019, I'm like, oh, finally, you know, a little stress is relieved. I can just work when I want, do what I want. And then we all know what happened in 2020. It challenged us all. But anybody who knows me, I like a challenge. So I'm like, all right, all right. Um, I had to think outside of the box that year. Um, what can I do differently to still get my stuff out there? So I started teaching classes. I'm like, I'm not much of a teacher, but hey, if you want to learn canning, I'll show you, which I, show you what I know. So I did that that year, and I learned that I loved it. I was uncomfortable doing it, just like I'm speaking here, very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so I did that. Um, I started doing a lot more shows. Um, other than Pride of Dakota, little ones in Minot, I did started um, exploring um, the sports shows as well, um, and different things, and just learning to know like what my market was, and I'm still learning uh, what my market was, um, and still is. Um, also, things about like, you know, how to climb the ropes. Um, love what you do and do what you love. If you love doing what you do, then keep on doing. If you don't, it's time for a change. Let's talk. Um, you know, learn to do a little at a time. Invest in your business. Um, you need to spend some money to make money. Um, do what you can afford. Um, instead of making yourself grow broke. Um, I did purchase a freezer at a time for my things. I started with a little, tiny little freezer. And then I'm like, oh, I saved enough money. Let's get a stand freezer. This should be big enough for all my stuff. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I purchased this summer the largest deep freeze I could possibly find in my knot. Um, and guess what? It's full. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh. Everything's, you know, just growing and growing. And now that my 10 by 12 space of the kitchen has exploded into my entire basement, every bedroom, every storage room with shelves and just supplies that I need just to operate, my husband's like, it's time. I'm like, yes, to grow into something else. So my next step is that we are planning um, to expand our property um, and expand into a bakery shop and a shop for my business. Um, another thing is, is that, you know, know what you want, adapt to your times. Um, I knew I didn't want a storefront yet, you know, I love doing vendor shows. I love talking with people. I love hearing people's stories about oh, my grandmother used to make this, or my mom and I used to make this. And listening to those stories just warms my heart. He's like, I haven't had choke cherry jelly in years. And I'm like, let me tell you, I said, these were hand-picked in my horse pasture. They were right beside me as I was picking them. So I'm like, it's made with love. Trust me, you'll love it. Um, learning to schedule your workload. Remember, there's seven days in a week not just one day in a week. 
Um, be a self-starter. Um, don't be a procrastinator. Um, definitely need to find a work-life balance. Um, I'm definitely one of those workaholics. I like to work a lot um, just to get the job done because I'm like, oh, then it's done. Check. Listen to your customers um, and seek advice from others in the current industry or those um, own, that own their own business. Um, be organized. Um, hire help as you need it. I did finally hire an employee um, the end of 2020. Um, it was a friend. She's just, you know, stay-at-home mom. And all she needed was just a few hours just to fill while her kids were at school. So it was perfect for me. She helped crack eggs, thousands and thousands of eggs. That helped me measure out certain ingredients just to keep the ball rolling a little bit. After all, we were in a 10 by 12 space, literally bumping shoulders, bumping bumps as we danced. Um, let's see, I'm actually on the road again to hiring a second employee to help me um, just to alleviate um, some of the workload um, that they can do uh, while I'm away at shows or if they're at a show I'm at home I'm working so learning that um, learning to work with different personalities and being flexible um, my employees have taught me a lot about being a better teacher um, so you can learn from each other as well um, lastly my last goal you know obviously is to expand um, looking for grants which I learned a lot today already um, and I'm glad I know what I know I just wish I would have knew that back then but that's okay that's how we learn and grow um, and then I hope to do a little bit more networking in my area I know there's a new networking group in Minot uh, so I plan to explore that um, I know I practice this in front of my dogs um, and I talk for like 25 minutes and I feel like I've talked for five now. So I talked really quickly. <laughs> Does anybody have questions? I may not have done the quite employee because I kind of under the table employee right now <laughs> until I learn that. But I, um, my tax person helped me out with that. Um, she's like, here's the proper paperwork um, for that. So she um, really helped me um, use her resources. Like even um, the health unit has helped me answer a lot of questions. I'm like, can I do this? They're like, yeah, sure. You know, or no, you probably shouldn't do that. Yes. What drove your decision to do that versus just doing that at a cottage Um, because I wanted, at the time, the cottage food law wouldn't allow me to go to vendor shows. Um, so that's kind of what drove me to get the license and work out of a commercial kitchen. Um, I could just produce a lot more in a larger space and a larger oven. Um, so I was able to do that. I actually am in a few uh, locations. Um, in Bismarck, I'm at Arrowhead Plaza Drug, um, Prairie Creek, um, and then I know when Home Sweet Home was going, it had quite a few locations across the state. Where at? I'm not quite sure, at least 30. Um, I recently took on Super Pumper um, this past summer, like last summer. Um, there were um, couple truck busiest truck stops in North Dakota, the Belfield one, if you've ever stopped in there, or in um, Newtown Travel Plaza. Um, I do, since they're short on hands, they just need to alleviate some of that in their um, deli department. Um, so I do all of my um, baked breads, um, sweet breads from banana, pumpkin, rhubarb, to all the single cookies there. They also carry a lot of um, canned goods. Um, well, so my best friend <laughs> is a district manager for Super Pumper. 
Um, so we kind of coordinate sometimes. She, it's a lot about who you know, you know. Um, she helps me out. She'll meet me part way. Once in a while, I'll deliver, but I, then I learned that I need to charge delivery fees for that. Um, I have shipped my things. I usually do speedy if it's in North Dakota. Um, obviously, you have to watch the temperatures with canned goods and stuff, but if it's not like 30 cases, it's only like five or six, then I'll send it. It's fairly inexpensive. You can't drive it for that. So. I also use um, out of state pirate ship is another good um, shipping they, um, website. Um, they go through USPS and UPS, I believe, and you just print the labels out and drop it off. So quick, more efficient. You don't have to stand in lines, literally just go in and drop it off. Any other questions? Okay, since I'm semi, um, I am licensed. I've been licensed since uh, 2016. Um, I don't have a separate entrance. I don't need to because I don't have a high volume of people or traffic in that area. Uh, my bathroom is right next to where I operate out of. So um, they allowed that since I'm low risk in that way. But obviously through the health department because I do canning, I'm at a like level three, so I get inspected twice a year. Any other questions? Can you explain the process of putting the commercial kitchen in your bedroom? The process? Like what we did? Yeah, like what you all had, what steps did you have to go through to get the inspection? Okay, yes. Um, so what I did, because I wanted to make sure it was okay instead of spending thousands of dollars putting this you know kitchen in my house I asked the health department I'm like can I do this I'm like can I just draw a rough plan and send it to you and then you guys approve it and then I'm good right so that's what I did and then once it, they said yes and I had it documented that they said yes and that my bathroom was okay and they said yes since I'm low risk um, then I went ran with it Got it all done in within a few weeks, um, and then quit my day job. I just have a comment for you, Becky. I've known you since you started. Um, as a, somebody else that does food, Becky's district for health department is the strictest in the state. So always go to your health department first, and they love to help you. Yes. They're super helpful. Don't be scared. They will, they will bend over backwards to help you if you get involved in food. Mm -hmm. They want to help you succeed, at least. Yep, Our department do does. It's that. been super helpful. So I'm on my next step of asking them, all right, okay, so <laughs> we're, we're on septic. So I'm like, well, we're going to build it across, you know, the road over here. I'm like, do we have to put in another septic, you know? So that's kind of my next plan is seeing like, is this doable right there on our current or do we, you're gonna make me do another one? So we will find out, stay tuned. <laughs> and if anybody ever needs help with anything, I know um, I did things maybe differently than you would, but seeking advice from other people even just farmer's market um, versus, you know, I actually work with a baker, um, Cherry on Top and Minot. Um, you know, she's a baker as well, but we order things together because to get a truck delivered, I need 15 pieces of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I don't have the space for all that. So I reached out to her. She's like, oh my gosh, please, can we order? So helping each other out, she or only orders just a handful of items, but that also helps me out. So collaborating and working with people in your community really does make a difference. Instead of having to go to the store every time. Um, in the last year, probably pickled eggs. 
Yes, believe it or not, like it or not, I don't really care for them, but people that love them either love them or dislike them. Um, another one is like rhubarb bread. You don't see that a lot. Um, what else? I don't know, I do some, I do a peanut butter banana um, with chocolate chips bread. That one usually catches people's eye. And I keep expanding. I'm like, ooh, I wonder if I can pickle this. <laughs> I never tried it. So my um, husband's kind of my guinea pig. I have a group of friends that are my guinea pigs. They're your um, best critics, I guess. So. Say that again? How do you go about pricing such a variety of items? Oh, good question. Um, so my best friend, <laughs> that is that district manager, she goes and she, um, one of her jobs is um, analyzing you know, the cost for everything. So I had to learn that as well. I'm like, I don't know how much to charge for this jam. She's like, well, what ingredients in it? Send me your ingredients and then how much you paid for a bag of this and that. And she. Um, put on a spreadsheet for me um, how much it costs to make that product and then how much you know I basically however much it costs I double that um, and then that's what my how much I'm making but then you know what's your wholesale what do you, what percent do you want your wholesale to be and then where do you want yours marketed I mean obviously when you wholesale it they have you know can price it at $15 if they want, um, but I always send them suggested retail prices. This is where you're going to be competitive in that price range. So it's a lot of items. When you're doing your price cost analysis, you guys got to remember your overhead costs, your employee costs. That all needs to be figured into your end product. And it's amazing how much that quickly adds up. Mm -hmm. Your time isn't free. No. You know, time is money. You got to remember, you know, you're working and it's, you still have to pay yourself. Then how did you figure out how much you work? How, how did I figure? Yeah. Well, um, my friend helped me out and then I just kind of looked at my market around me, what other people were pricing their things in, at to be competitive. I actually called the grocery store about some of my um, baked goods just to see where I was at, if I was in the ballpark of what they were or not. How did you consider how much you pay yourself? How did I consider? Yeah, how did you know how much you're worth? You. Um, maybe I'm not good at that part. Because yeah. <laughs> I just use the money I get in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just use it. At, I save a lot um, because I always want to buy new equipment. I bought a commercial um, kitchen slicer, which was amazing for getting things done just like that versus hand slicing rhubarb. Like, I did 60 gallons this last year by hand. Crazy. Then I finally got this commercial thing, and that took me hours. I'm like, oh, my gosh, why didn't I... Like, you know, it's the whole work smarter, not harder thing, but you have to work harder before you get smarter that these things exist. So I'm also looking at something for like commercial making um, cookies as well, because I scoop a lot of cookies and starting to get issues in my hands. So something that can help me out in that line of dispensing the cookies on a cookie sheet as well. So trying to find those grants or those programs available to me. I think I've gotten a good lead um, in this conference, so. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs>